So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand here and talk to you for a minute because my clipper sounds different and she's going a little bit like, well, I don't know about all that. So I'm just gonna let it sit here. See how she does for a minute and touch her. So even though she's had her face probably clippered, scissored, whatever, since she was born, this is different for her. And this is part of what I want people to understand is that even on a really well socialized, nice dog, anything different can make them act up, especially a young dog or a puppy like this. Good girl. So if I had just come straight at her with this blade and not given her a second, she probably would have tried to completely back off this table and acted like a fool. And she's still eyeballing it because it sounds different, but I gave her just a minute to get used to it. I'm going to go backwards around her lips so I don't have anything sticking out, but she's still going to have a good bit of plush on her muzzle because we want to accentuate that a little bit and make it look a little bit better. <laughs> but the key, the key to this kind of thing is just when you have a dog like this is just, just be patient. Just keep going back. If the dog is absolutely not accepting of it, do something else, you know? Okay, fine, don't clip her the dog's face that day. Go get your thinning shears and try to, you know, do the thinning shears. Um, if there's some kind of an issue with it, tell the owner. Let them know, hey, you know what, we need to work on this. And if you don't, if you don't have, what was that, 30 seconds or something? If you don't have 30 or 45 seconds to acclimate a new dog to something on your table, then you're doing too many dogs and you're not charging enough money. If you're in that much of a hurry and you're that stressed out, then so are your dogs. I think she must have had, they must have done a 10 around her back skull. So we'll do that. But basically what you're doing is you're taking off the whole muzzle and down the front of the neck, almost like a, you know, pretend it's like a poodle. Take off the whole cheeks and down the front of the neck, all the way back to the ear on the side. And then the seven will, will leave a little bit of stuff here in front of the eyes where it lays funny because it's such a fat wide blade, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So I'll take the thinning shears in there and, and fix that up a little bit. Okay, and where's my other little clipper? What did I do with it? I'm always disorganized without my stuff where it's supposed to be. There it is. All the way down the bottom, of course. Hey, that got girl. Okay. So then what we do is we want, we want them to have, they're supposed to have a large open eye and a well-defined stop. Okay, this is the stop here. So we want a nice well-defined stop on her in particular because we want her muzzle to look just a teeny weeny bit longer. So I'm gonna scoop that out right between her eyes. And then I'm gonna come right here down the side of her eye line, right just around the back of her skull. Does anybody know why we would do that? What are we trying to accomplish with that, do you think? What happens when we do that? That part of your, your round dome shape that you're... Yes, that's part of it. What's the other thing? One more reason. A nice arch in the neck. So this heavier coat here should be longer on the back of the neck because they're supposed to have a well-arched neck. So if we do that, that makes that stand out. Make sense? Okay. Where are you going? 
is away from you. I don't think I like you anymore. I liked you this morning when you gave me my treat. That's one thing you can usually get. You can get to a cocker through food. Any kind of a spaniel. They love food. So depending on the ear and the length of the ear and what you want to accomplish, you can either go with a tin forward or you can take it in reverse if you want it tighter. If you've got a really, really thick um, ear leather, you can take it in reverse, but you have to be careful doing that on some dogs because you'll show skin and then it looks a little bit weird. What are you doing, miss? She's like, that's a weird buzzing sound too. So it's very interesting to me that dogs that have been groomed their whole life for show can all of a sudden be like this. And it's something that made me realize that some of the practices I had in my salon were not good. I wasn't understanding that dogs weren't just trying to be difficult. They're just working off of instinct and what they already know. And she's very young and she's probably never had a clipper that sounds particularly like this in her ear. So she's schmutzing around and she's acting a little bit silly. She's not trying to bite or anything. She's just trying to get away. So I just keep putting her back where I want her. I'm not trying not to feed into it. I'm not yanking on her. I'm not forcing her to do anything. I'm just putting her back. Every time she moves, I'm sticking her back where I want her. And that's dog language for come stay here. But I didn't say it, right? Because the more you fuss, the more you fuss, the more you talk to a dog like that. No, sit, stay, blah, 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 blah. Why are you like this? The more they just get worked up and you're not accomplishing anything. I'm teaching her what I want by putting her where I want her with my hands. Good girl. One of the things you said in one of the last classes was uh, dogs, your dog might not even speak English. Right. <laughs> yeah. It makes me laugh every time I think about it because I That's have right. a couple that you tell they're not speaking English at home. Right. They don't, they don't even know what you're saying to them. <laughs> you know, they might be speaking Russian at home. They don't understand what you're saying. Sit. I can't understand your accent. <laughs> right. And additionally, if you teach a dog to sit on your table and then they start sitting when you're trying to do their rear end, what do we do? Then we yell at them to stand up. No, we, we don't do that. I, I, I speak to dogs 99% of the time. I'm in my mobile, I have my headset on. I speak to them with my hands. The only time they hear something out of my mouth is usually a good girl. Something nice and quiet and gentle. Nothing overworked or overwrought unless like we had a little incident, you heard my ugly voice. I said, no, <clears throat> like that. That's dog language too. That, <clears throat> that's a growl to a dog. They understand that. And then they, and they understand that little correction too. So those are things that dogs understand. They don't understand you fussing at them. All they know is they're in trouble and they don't know what else to do. So that makes them want to do the exact opposite and get away from you. They don't want to be near you because they don't know what they're supposed to do. And you'll find that happens a lot with uh, pet owners, that the dogs are so, those dogs that are constantly nervous all the time, the problem is, is they don't know what to do. They don't have a leader. That's half of their anxiety is because they don't know what the heck they're supposed to be doing. So if you can have a consistent schedule and a consistent way you do things in your salon, it makes, it generally makes them calm down, at least when they're here. All right, so with these ears, you want to come all the way down. If you have good ears, you want to come all the way down to that little fold. See where it folds right there? To the bottom of where that fold ends is a general rule. And then on the back, you don't want to shave below that little crease in the ear back here. Because if you do, you take off all of that and then you lose most of your ear, see? So even though it's not exactly even with the front, you don't want to go, you can see where somebody actually did a little bit right there, see? There was probably a knot or something in there. 
But if you go below that flap in the back, that takes off a huge amount of hair off the back of you. You lose a bunch of your ear. So even if it's not even with this up in the front, don't take that off in the back. Just make your little line look like it's going there. So they can be straight across or they can have a little V shape. It's both of them are correct. Usually when you see them making a V shape, they're trying to make the ear look what? Longer. Right. They're trying to draw your eye down and make the ear look longer because the ear's not long enough. Hers are long enough. They go past the end of her nose. That's her ear leather right there. So they have to be, even, and, and poodles too, their breed standard actually says that their ear leather should reach the end of their nose. But most of the time, particularly toys and minis, it's really hard to breed them with their ear leather that long, but you'll see it a lot in standards. See, yeah, he's checking. So, so no matter what you do, even if her ear leather doesn't go there, leave the hair that long. So when you're, try when you're doing like a German trim or whatever, if you leave the hair that long, it looks better. You don't know why, it just does. Uh, but it's because it's in their breed standard that their ear leather should be that long. All right, so that, that's pretty much all the clippering that we do. Um, I'm not going to, it doesn't look like they've been going into her shoulder layback with a 10, so I'm just going to probably come down the side with a 7. But again, if you had a dog with like tons of thick coat or it needed some more neck, a short neck, you want to make the neck look longer, make the sides shorter. So we come right down the side like this into the shoulder layback, just like that. Where are you going? Come back here. And then you can see where it's been clippered before. It goes straight across the front. And then this is also very similar to a terrier. Run your fingers down till it goes in the dip. You don't want to go any further than that because you want all this stuff left on the front.